All right, we're here with Dr. Paul and Dr. Bob Atkinson, who's here going to be talking about the SuperPath technique. Let's get this thing started. Uh, Dr. Paul, Dr. Bob, what is actually the SuperPath technique? Well, I can start. Uh, 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 SuperPath is a new technique for total hip replacement. It is the first of its kind. It's a tissue sparing technique and one in which patients can walk within hours after surgery. Patients who have this procedure oftentimes go home the morning after. And uh, at one week, they're doing what traditional fracture patients are doing in a month. Excellent, okay. What, um, how does it actually differ from other surgical techniques or other procedures out there on the market? The uh, super path techniques is a variation of, uh, of a posterior approach that um, complete muscle uh, uh, avoids any muscle cutting. It, it's a small incision, approximately three inches in length. It's less invasive. Uh, again, no muscle is uh, cut. Simply an arthrotomy is, is accomplished, and it results in an extremely uh, stable uh, hip replacement. So stable, in fact, that patients uh, uh, do not have any restrictions uh, placed on them as is in the typical hip replacements, including uh, sitting in low chairs, uh, crossing legs, uh, etc. Okay. Well, with those restrictions. One thing, one thing sure. I'd like to mention about that is that <clears throat> there is a thing called a mini posterior hip approach, and this approach is different than that. Even in the mini posterior hip approach, all surgeons are doing is making a smaller incision. They're still cutting muscles. In this approach, we do not cut the muscles. We do not cut the tendons. We do not put the patients on a fracture table. We do not put their hips in extraordinary positions in order to perform it. We use standard instruments to do this. In fact, with this technique, we we are able to do virtually any kind of hip replacement on a patient and we, we choose our hip replacement according to the patient rather than the surgical approach. For example, with certain surgical approaches like the anterior hip approach, there are special instruments designed just for that and a prosthesis which is designed for the surgical approach we use a prosthesis that is designed for the patient, not for the surgical approach. Excellent, okay. Dr. Paul, you were talking about restrictions there a couple minutes ago. Did you want to go a little bit more in depth on, on what restrictions a SuperPath doesn't have as opposed to what uh, other surgical techniques actually do have? Certainly. Uh, many traditional hip replacement approaches uh, uh, have patients uh, avoid uh, ex extreme positions to help minimize the risk of uh, their hip popping out of place, such as uh, bending over. Uh, people must use extreme care, tying shoes, uh, crossing legs, uh, sitting in low chairs. With the uh, super path uh, hip replacement, uh, uh, the answer is there are, are no restrictions. Uh, these, this prosthesis inherent, is inherently stable and uh, uh, results in uh, uh, activities that can be uh, unmatched by, by patients who undergo traditional uh, uh, hip replacement approach. You know, I would add that it's, it's, uh, it's the, prosthes the prosthesis is stable, and, but it's stable because of the surgical technique that we use. And this is because we preserve the capsule. All other hip replacements wind up dislocating the hip. The capsule is not preserved. Because of preservation of the capsule, we are able to eliminate any hip restrictions. Patients will, if, they, if, if, if you have a, some other kind of hip replacement done, say, what are my restrictions, doctor? The doctor will say, well, you have to be careful about this, this, and this. With the super path technique, the answer is there are no post-operative restrictions in terms of hip position. Perfect. All right. That worked. I think that went really well. So now, uh, uh, there's a few other things that we'd like to talk about, too, in sure. terms of complications relating to uh, traditional hip replacements. Okay. Uh, 
versus the superpath technique. Uh, one of them is fractured femur, which is uh, has a much higher incidence with other type of, types of hip replacements, in particular the anterior hip replacement, in which the exposure is very limited and difficult. Another is post-operative numbness in the, in the leg. And that's because in, for example, the anterior hip approach, which uh, although it is muscle sparing as well, patients are placed on a fracture table and uh, their hips are placed in uh, unusual stressful positions that uh, uh, ankle fractures have even been uh, reported following an anterior uh, hip approach in addition to femur fractures. So we eliminate that and uh, we don't have the incidence of numbness that's associated with those. If you have a surgeon who performs an anterior approach, ask him about post-operative numbness and he'll tell you it can happen. Well, that's related to the fracture table positioning and the surgical approach. And we avoid this with the uh, super path technique. Anything else that you two can think of that you wanted to uh, go over? The dislocation rate is extremely uh, uh, high with uh, patients who undergo an anterior approach, as high as uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, with the uh, super path uh, approach, the uh, dislocation rate is, varies between 0 and 1 percent. This is a serious complication that can occur after total hip replacement, but because of the tissue preserving nature of the procedure and the preservation, complete preservation of the capsule, this is avoided with super path. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much, Ryan. Have a good day. You too. Bye -bye. Okay.